Karen Jekyll Life. Hi guys, welcome to my channel and today in this video tutorial we are going to discuss what are the different approaches for making a embedded systems. Okay. So guys, like before I start with this video, I would like to tell you I already uploaded some videos related to embedded systems like introduction to embedded systems and embedded systems versus normal operating system. So all those videos are already there on my channel. I'll be leaving their links in the description section for this video. Okay. So guys, now in this video, we are going to discuss what are the different approaches to develop our embedded system. Okay, so guys, there are two approaches to develop an embedded system. First approach is take an existing operating system and modify it for to, to be used as a embedded systems. Okay, so take an existing operating system, modify it for embedded use. And with our second approach is design and implement our operating system, which is solely used as a embedded system means here we take our existing operating system we make modifications to it so that it can be suitable for embedded applications our another approach is you make a dedicated embedded systems for some application okay so guys now what these approaches are now we will discuss these approaches one by one in detail now guys coming to our first approach what was that taking an existing op uh, operating system, modify it for embedded applications. Okay, so how do we do that? Okay, so by adding real time capabilities, so we take a normal operating system to that operating system, when we add real time capabilities, now all of you know what is a real time capability, real time capability is the capability in which the operating system must respond in some fixed time frame. So what do we call it? We call it as real time capability. So when we add some real time scheduling to it, or when we add some real time capability to our normal operating system, then it can be used for embedded applications. Okay. And then next point by, by applying necessary functionalities. So we take a existing operating system, we keep the functionalities or we keep the functionalities of the existing operating systems, which we need for the embedded applications and removing all other functionalities, which we do not need for the embedded applications. Okay. For example, we have a Really, we have a normal operating system. Okay, to that we added real time functionality. That is the functionality which we need for embedded application. Okay, and there are other functionalities of normal operating system. For example, file management. Okay, we remove them because in, in, in embedded systems, we do not need any file handling directory management. We do not need it. So remove them. Okay, and add the things which we need and strip down all the functionalities which we do not need. Okay, so that is the stacking point. So first is add real time capability. It is a functionality which we need and remove the other functionalities which we do not need. File example, file management. We do not need file management in an embedded systems because in embedded systems, we do not store any file. So we do not need to manage them and remove all those unnecessary functionalities. Okay. And what are the advantages of modifying an existing operating system for embedded applications? Good portability, isn't it? Now, what do you mean by portability? That is our ease of transportation. Normal operating systems, they run on many different platforms right multiple different architectures so they provide with a very good portabilities okay and the interfaces why the portability is good because the interfaces of the normal operating system the hardware interface the software interfaces they are familiar we already know them we already we are using them so which makes them very portable okay and what are the disadvantages and what are the disadvantages of modifying our normal operating system for embedded applications? So they are slower. Why they are slower? Because they are not dedicated embedded systems. That is something else which we are modifying so that it can work as an embedded system. So they are unpredictable. Okay. So when we develop a dedicated embedded system, so we know what result it is going to 
give us okay but in this case we modified some existing operating system to perform something else okay so they are not predictable okay and they are not optimized for real time use isn't it so what happens we added real time capabilities but they are not optimized for real time use okay and guys now in next part we will discuss a example of a real time operating system which can be modified to work as an embedded system now guys linux is one of the operating system which can be easily modified for embedded use okay so why it can be easily modified first point is it is easy to strip down okay so linux is an operating system open source operating system so which which makes us very easy all the files everything are available of it okay so easy for us to remove the functionalities from it easy for us to strip it down so that we keep only that part of linux which we need for the embedded applications okay so and on linux it is very easy for us to add real time compute okay so you know one of the requirements for embedded operating system is real time capabilities okay and it is easy for us to add real time capabilities to linux operating system okay and it comes with the support for microcontroller okay so it it we have something called as muc linux okay so which has a support for microcontroller programming okay so that muc linux can be used to control a microcontroller and that's what embedded systems are doing okay and it comes without main memory unit okay you remember so we need to remove the functionalities which we do not need okay so memory management is one of the functionality of a normal operating system which we do not need for embedded system so it doesn't come with that so which makes our job more easier and guys now we will discuss some of the characteristics of a purpose built embedded system okay so first of all they have a very fast processor switch okay or context switch now all of you know what is a context switch when the processor jumps from one process to another so we call it as context switch so these purpose built embedded systems so they have a very quick context switch means that that operating system the purpose built embedded system can jump between the processes very quickly okay then they have real time scheduling okay so all of you know what is real time and all of you know what is real time scheduling the scheduling which is capable capable of handling the real time operations okay in fixed time constraints okay and then they are small in size as compared to traditional operating systems they are big in size we cut them so that they can become small so they are by existence they are by small in size okay and they provide the bounded execution time now what is bounded execution time means the system must give us the result in a fixed period of time so we also call it as real time operation we also call it as real time operation okay and they can maintain a real time clock okay so they can maintain a clock using which we can they can ensure the output or the result is generated in real time okay and they provide the primitives okay most of the embedded systems they have the primitives okay so using which we can delay the processing by fixed amount of time okay so if we want to delay the processing for fixed amount of time we can do that they come with that support for example in your washing machine if you set the timer okay so the machine will start washing your clothes after 24 hours okay so what we are doing we are delaying the operation for a fixed amount of time so all these sports it comes in the purpose built embedded operating system and guys now we will do some example of purpose built embedded systems and guys these are the examples of some purpose built embedded operating system the first one is ecos embedded configurable operating system okay so it is an embedded operating system which can be com- configured for different applications then we have vx works now what is a vx works it is also an embedded operating system which supports hard real time capabilities 
okay now all of you know what is a hard real time capabilities which i have already explained in some of my previous videos okay so then we have symbian operating system so it is a mobile operating system embedded operating system for mobile phones earlier old nokia phones they used to use this symbian operating system then we have ios okay all of you must be familiar with ios ios is a embedded systems which are used in most of the apple phones not most of the apple phones all of the apple's iphones okay so then we have tiny os so that is also an open source embedded operating system we call it as tiny os other than this nowadays most popular we have android isn't it so what is android android also is a mobile operating system which is used in most of the smartphones which are not apple phones okay so guys these are some of the examples of purpose built embedded operating systems so guys again if you like my videos okay so please subscribe to my channel i'll be uploading more and more videos related to it topics and guys all of you thanks for watching and stay tuned